is because we're going to be doing modelling. So thanks. And Teresa, can you please be my scribe? And Jess, Max, can you find the table because I've only got four. Oh, no, there's four stations. That's fine. All good. You guys can stay. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah, it works. We're good. <coughs> so, I would have already kind of covered polypeptide synthesis in this first part, of, first half of the lesson. Now I'm going to start watch, showing a video to illustrate that. When I show the video, I'm going to pause it at certain areas, and you're going to tell me what you find important in that um, section of the video, and we're going to write it on the board. Then you need to also write that down because we're going to be modeling. I can you sorry, I don't know her name. Can you put your laptop away? Thanks. Mm. <laughs> Good classroom right. management. So <laughs> innermost workings of how a simple code is turned into flesh and blood. This is what Francis Crick called the central dogma of modern biology. How DNA makes protein. It starts with a bundle of factors assembling at the start of a gene. It's these that... So, gene. What's a gene? <laughs> no, that is the little moving around bits that's assembling at the gene. So, what's a gene? A code. A um, code. Yeah? The segment of DNA that goes... Protein? Yeah, so it's a segment of DNA. Can you write Tika? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Please. Please. <laughs> um, cool. So, gene is a segment of DNA. So, we'll also put DNA up there. And who can give a definition for DNA? Lloyd. <laughs> what? The blueprint of life. That works. Okay. All right. Oh. To trigger the first phase of the process, reading off the information that will be needed to make the protein. The gene is the length of DNA stretching away to the left. Everything's ready to roll. Three, two, one. The blue molecule racing along the DNA is reading the gene. Crazy. It's unzipping the double helix and copying one of the two strands. The yellow chain snaking out of the top is a copy of the genetic message, and it's made of a close chemical cousin of DNA called RNA. Okay, RNA, mRNA. What is mRNA? Messenger RNA. Messenger RNA. Jess, can you give a definition for us? It's um, a copy of the um, bases of the yeah. DNA that yeah. then is used for protein synthesis. Awesome. Good. So it's a copy of the DNA, and they said it was a closely related cousin. So it's like DNA, but it's formed of different nucleotides that we'll look at. Um, actually, that we've already looked at. All right. The building blocks to make the RNA enter through an intake hole. They are matched to the DNA, letter by letter, to make an exact copy of the A's, C's, G's, and T's of the gene. Okay, so how does the blue molecule um, know what kind of a code to make? It uses the DNA as a pattern. Yes, and, and what's important about the base pairing? What's going to happen? So what if it uses it as a code? What is the nucleotides? The nucleotides are specific letters, A, T, C, G, and U, as we saw in mRNA. What about that and the DNA is going to allow us to make a copy? It's complementary to the DNA. Great. So they're complementary base pairs. Good. Yes? What's the significance of those letters? Do you mean the actual letter? Like a letter A? Yeah. It's just a shorthand way of describing the actual 
um, the nucleotides. So we've got four major macromolecules, biological molecules that are in the body, lipids, carbohydrates, fat, uh, lipids, carbohydrates, amino acids, and the fourth one is nucleotides. So they make up the DNA and the RNA. So A, T, C, G are just short for adenine, thiamine, cytosine, guanine. So they're actual abbreviations. They're abbreviations, yep. One letter, like a base. Yep, thank you. Okay. So, confirmation base pairs. Okay. The only difference is that in the RNA copy, the letter T is replaced with a closely related nucleic acid known as U. Okay, who can get that point? David? Uh, T is substituted for U. Yeah, in RNA. Great. You are watching this process called transcription in real time. It's happening right now in almost every cell in your body. Okay, so who's going to be the brave one to describe transcription for us? One, one sentence. Lloyd. It's the copying of DNA into the mRNA. Beautiful. Yep. When the RNA yeah, right. copy yes, is complete, please. it snakes yeah, away from the nucleus and into the outer part of the cell. Then, in a dazzling display of choreography, all the components of another molecular machine lock together around the RNA to form a miniature factory called a ribosome. Okay, so we saw that mRNA moved out of the nucleus into um, the cytoplasm, and we've already covered why this is important, because the code needs to get out of the nucleus into the ribosome, so we'll also add that one on there. And what does it find in the cytoplasm here? What did they say? Anyone? The ribosome. Good. Finds the ribosome. It translates the genetic information in the RNA into a string of amino acids that will become a protein. Special transfer molecules, the green triangles, bring each amino acid to the ribosome. The amino acids are the small red tips attached to the transfer molecules. There are different transfer molecules for each of the 20 amino acids. They all carry a specific three-letter code that will be read by the machine. Okay, so the green molecules were? Transfer, transfer RNA. Transfer RNA, and the little red tips were? Amino acids. Good. Now we come to the heart of the process. Inside the ribosome, the RNA is pulled through like a tape. The code for each amino acid is read off three letters at a time and matched to three corresponding letters on the transfer molecule. So how many bases does the ribosome read in? Three. Threes. When the red transfer molecule plugs in, the amino acid it carries is added to the growing protein chain. And finally, how do we make a polypeptide? Yes, Logan? I had an Oh, one. yes. <laughs> go ahead. If they're just molecules, mm -hmm. how do they know where to go? Okay. <laughs> All right, no. Oh, you mean how does the tRNA know where to go? That's just random. That's just random. They are randomly... Well, it's just a mixture and it happens by chance. Yeah, it happens by chance. Mm -hmm. There's not just one ribosome in a cell, there are literally like in the thousands, I would probably so even estimate up to 10. Mutation in cancer. So it's I, I would estimate up to 10,000 um, ribosomes transcribing and tra sorry, translating at any one point. So they are everywhere in the cells. So it's very likely that they will find the tRNAs with their little amino acids attached to them. But it's in its chance. Any other questions so far? I'm going to let the rest of the video play. Again, you are watching this in real time. And after a few seconds, the assembled protein starts to emerge from the ribosome. Ribosomes can make any kind of protein. It just depends what genetic message you feed in on the RNA. In this case, the end product is hemoglobin. The cells in our bone marrow 
churn out a hundred trillion molecules of it per second. Okay, thanks. The last point, what were the little red... Yeah, that's pretty fascinating, Protein. right? The last point was, okay, the amino, the amino acids are left at the... Where are they left? Uh, no, they can't. They're in the cytoplasm. Where do they kind of get deposited to make the polypeptide? The big blue molecule? The ribosome, so the amino acids are left at the ribosome, or deposited, either way. Um, and then, did you guys catch what a string of amino acids were? Yes. Yeah? Polypeptide, did you hear that? Yeah, polypeptide. That was the last one. Awesome. Okay, so now, we're going to model that, so you can... Um, Thank you so much. No worries. Okay. okay, so now we're going to model that so you, it can become clearer. So your challenge is, to, in your groups, um, choose whether you'd like to do a, like a physical model um, using cutouts and stuff. And then we're going to draw these. So like what we saw, we're going to try and model it, but not using animations, just using paper. And then we're going to draw that. Alternatively, you can come up with an analogy to describe each of the different roles that we've come up with. Um, in your books. So you need a, an analogy for DNA, you need an analogy for mRNA, etc, etc. So I've suggested you could use um, like a sporting analogy or a business analogy, for example with a boss or you know with the workers or anything that you might come up with. So I'll give you like a minute to discuss in your groups what you, which option you'd like to do and then um, I'll give you out the handouts as well.